Welcome to eParchala. Myself Richa, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Political Science in MCM DAV College, Chandigarh. Today, I will talk about the issue of modernization. Modernization is a very complex process. Some people refer it is from in the form of economic development. Modernization changes from traditional to modern way. Modernization tells us about the change, but it does not guarantee modernity. Modernization obviously change the behavior, the thoughts of the human beings. Modernization is possible in each and every society, but sometimes the change, the modernization will be in a very slow process and sometimes it is a very fast process. And whenever a modernization takes place, the political system has to change according to it. And if it does not change according to the time and situation and according to the modernization, then obviously the system come to an end or it will be collapsed. Objectives to know the meaning of modernization, to be familiar with the process of modernization, to understand the various stages of modernization, to be familiar with the obstacles in the process of modernization, to trace the process of modernization, and to trace the process of modernization in developing countries. Modernization is difficult to explain for its defies and definite pattern. Every society has its own path of modernization, which can be gradual or sudden. Huntington described modernism a multifaceted process involving change in all areas of human thought and activity. Modernization includes changes in the culture, norms and values of the people. It implies the existence of a traditional order that is to be changed for the better. That is, it is the effect of the new on the old, not the total eradication of the old and the substitution by the new as it is covered under the rubric of political development. The challenge of the political system is to change and reinvent itself. This change becomes essential because decay and stagnation can only be fatal to any political system. If a political system does not adapt itself to new situation, it would lead to the eventual collapse of many political systems. As the process of modernization takes place, the political system formulates various policies to adapt to new changes or herald in the required changes. We feel more comfortable in asserting that the society is modernizing than in claiming that it is developing. A modernized house is very different from a modern one and often more comfortable to live in. Modernization does not necessarily result in modernity. We usually trace the historical development of modernization from the European countries to be more specific it is Britain, which is identified as the first country to start its journey on the path of modernization and an example for other countries. If the Britain, which was a trendsetter of modernization, the industrial revolutions heralded in scientific and technological development in Britain led to far reaching changes in Britain. The industrial revolution opened up the vision of unlimited possibility. In Britain, modernization occurred because of the lethal combination of inventiveness, innovations and the urge for growth. The availability of abundant workforce and stagnancy in agriculture were other factors that led to the enterprising people to search new areas to rake profit. Britain's strong navy and command over the seas helped it to expand its market to those parts of the world which were untouched by the modern changes. Britain decided to modernize these countries in its own way. This aspect is known as white man's burden. Of course, the people of these backward classes, countries, were not taken into confidence. The developing countries, which were called the third world countries, faced a strange dilemma. They were caught in a quadri and are still caught in it through. Today, they are known as the developing countries, for they have worked hard to move steadily on the path of progress. The question was that they wanted to modernize, but in what degrees, at what speed? There were a few who did not want change. 
the subject of political modernization has its special relevance in the case of developing countries of the third world which are damned if they do not and damned if they don't the developed countries like britain maintain that they were helping the third world progress while there were thinkers like marx who felt that this was an eyewash to a certain point even marx who regarded industrialization as a necessary evil believed in its progressive consequences not only would it generate the possibility for a new kind of life of abundance and freedom in advance society but in countries like india china and turkey which he regarded as static despotic barbaric colonialism would serve to innovate and stir things up colonialism then for the marx was a progressive force in so far it is an instrument of advanced capitalist society breaking through what he called as asiatic mode of production this would introduce conflict and change in backward countries while producing war depression intensification of crisis in the metropole or the mother country while the countries following a democratic norms believed in bestowing social and political equality the countries advocated communalism and socialism believed in giving economic equality a priority but modernization does go through different stages in different countries the developing countries which were called the third world countries in the last century also went through different stages in the first stage the developed country expanded and this led to acquisition of territory in different parts of the world a group of people in the developing countries decided to venture into new lands for different purposes the purpose could be missionary zeal or a thirst for adventure or a craving for more wealth whatever be the reason these people were the ones who started the process of modernization in the acquired territory overseas the native people the indigenous population had to be civilized these people who become dependent on these colonizers had to the line of these civilized master the dependent people lived a traditional life with their own set of customs and values which differ from their masters because their customs and norms differed they had to be changed This was decided by the colonial masters who brought their living style as well as their values with them. There was a scant regard for the lifestyle of the indigenous people. Whatever was not according to the colonial masters was looked down in the disdain and had to be replaced. The dependent population was in awe of the whites and felt it a, it a privilege to be guided by a superior race. This not only complicated the situation but made it easier for the people of the western civilization to garner full support to introduce many changes. They termed all these changes as modernization though there were some among the natives who differed. The later felt for their norms and customs and believed in the usefulness of their values. With little contact between the colonial and indigenous population, changes were slow to be adapted. contact at this time was accorded to the wishes of the white for example while the krishnan missionaries were in contact with the masses for they wanted to spread christianity a majority of the whites practiced discrimination and maintain a degree of distance from the natives taking the later help for menial jobs we can take the case of india one of the biggest colonies of britain the british came with the purpose of trade and gradually expanded into the social sphere and then gained control over the political institution in the case of india there were several civil practices like sati child marriage female infanticides and the caste system the last the caste system horribly discriminated against the shudras the later were at the lower most rung of the caste system the few intellectuals like raja ram mohan roy ishwar chand vidyasagar keshav chandra sen jyotira phule shri narayan guru pandit ramabai etc sought the help of the british to eradicate these and other social evil as it is difficult to break into the customs and habits of the people the people would not pay heed to the preaching of the, their fellow indians the later advice was ignored so the educated enlightened indians took the help of the british to break into barriers of customs by passing laws 
Lord William Bentick enacted a law against the practice of sati. Foreigners like Colonel Todd, Malcolm have written about the evil practice of female infanticides and inhuman practice that kill girls right after birth through various means. Various laws were passed in 1795, 1802, 1804 and in 1870 to finish this practice. The Widow Remarriage Act was passed in 1856 that encouraged widow remarriage. The minimum marriageable age for a girl was 10 years in 1846. It was raised to 12 years in 1891 through the enactment of the Age of Consent Act, then to 14 years through the Sharda Act and in 1978 to 18 years. Caste system was another practice that was in vogue in India. It was Mahatma Gandhi and Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar who struck at this evil practice. Pariyar founded the self-respect movement in the Madras presidency to fight against the caste system. They faced much opposition from the upper caste, yet they continue in their effort. In Africa, there was a scramble to capture land as it was a rich source of raw material as well as huge market for finished good. In the beginning, the European power traded under the primary commodity commerce, which is also known as the legitimate trade or commerce. Under this, they got the supply from the African intermediaries. After the Berlin Act in 1885, in which the African were not included, the European felt that the former had signed away their sovereignty. The European power felt that they had full right to trade, invade and colonize any part of Africa. When the Africans resisted the European efforts to ignore the African intermediaries, the European asked their respective home government to impose free trade. At this time, the European arrived on a formula to take care of the surplus population in Africa. They decided to export the people to other parts of the world, either to work or settle in inhabited land so that they could start settlement colonies with availability of large workforce. Gradually in the stage 2, according to Apter, the efforts of colonialism are noticed. The emergence of urban areas, trade centers and expansion of markets are the few features. Because of the increase in trade and more activity by the colonial regime, more manpower is required to run the daily affairs of the state. Native people drew into closer contact with the foreigners. Rules and regulations required local authority to aid and assist in carrying out the dictates and mandates of the colonial regime. The belief was that with education and exposure to the West, the natives would prosper. The benefits came with many costs too for the indigenous population. They had to say goodbye to many things which had their utility. This led to the birth of the inferiority amongst the native and assertion of domination of the whites. At this stage, the natives were bound by chain, which were more mental than physical. Efforts were made to ape the people from the West. Their way of dressing, talking, eating was considered superior. An alternative lifestyle was offered to the natives. One the traditional, which was considered lowly, and the other the modernized, version which was in a nutshell the European lifestyle. The whites hobnobbed with the natives but only in the economic and political sphere. Socially distance was maintained between the colonial master and the people on whom they ruled. Marx was proved right for in this stage developments spread from the metropolis to periphery creating towns, markets, school, all of which offered alternatives to lives which in European standards were regarded for the most part as dull, nasty, brutish and short. The endeavour was to continue domination. The negative efforts of colonialism were many. There was a direct attack on the culture of the natives. The effect was to wipe away the values and norms of indigenous population. The sense of superiority was unbashedly showcased which led to the native population, especially the younger generation, to turn their backs to their own culture. In India, the education system was one such victim. The Guru Shishya Parampara was the hallmark of Indian education system. A teacher after taking training from his master set up a school in any village that they did not have a teacher or a school. With the help of the villagers, the Guru took classes in the temple, courtyard 
or in the land donated by the villagers. The disciple paid in kind or cash as it suited them. There were no fixed fees nor, nor were the classroom. All the pupils were taught together and slowly the brilliant were identified and given extra coaching. On the whole, there was no discrimination and all the people were treated equal. Learning was oral. The system was very friendly. From there was no attendance system. People helped at home and attended classes according to their convenience. During the harvest season, classes were suspended for two months as all the children held the fields. Thus, the education system was friendly. No one remained illiterate. The people were taught in the lap of nature for they studied under trees in the open. It introduced a healthy lifestyle too. All this was replaced by the British education system, which confined children to classroom with a fixed fee structure and compulsory attendance. School dropouts were reported. The schools of the native which refused to toe the line of the British were denied grants. Gradually, they closed down or gave way to the British-type schools. Rabindranath Tagore was a great votary of these schools and wanted them to continue with the introduction of science, math and astronomy. His school in West Bengal, Shanti Niketan, is molded on this concept of Guru Shishya Parampara, which classes held in open. Jobs went to the youth who knew English and had studied in the school mentored by the British. Macaulay introduced his famous minute which advocated the angelist point of view. Lord William Benedict got the resolution passed on March 7, 1835 that declared that all the government's fund would be used for the promotion of the Western literature and science. It further declared that the medium would be English. There were many among the whites who, decide, who desired the teaching in Oriental language and they opposed Macaulay. Indians moved away from their culture by wearing the European trousers and shirts instead of the traditional clothes. Though the European clothes were not comfortable in Indians' heat and according to the climate, yet these clothes were considered modern. A small elite emerged among the locals which were quick to modernize and adapt to the latest trends. But unfortunately, the exploitations of the native grew by leaps and bounds. We have the example of the slave trade in Africa. Land was taken away from the tribes and the natives were pushed away from the fertile land which had been there for centuries. In the stage 3, the newly emerged local elite demanded more participation in the affair of state. There was an increase in the interaction between the local elites and the common masses. Local elites who had received their education from the Western system emerged as a leader. They learned a lot, lot from the Western elite and then decided to implement these in their own countries. These elite accelerated the pace of development and struggled for freedom in the colonies. The backlash against the colonial authority started as indigenous population grew tired of all the exploitation and as well as domination meted out to them. The people of the colonies were also inspired by the American War of Independence of 1776, the French Revolution of 1789 and the Russian Revolution in 1917. The leaders of the national level combined their strength with the regional leaders and asked freedom from the shackles of slavery. The colonial authorities tried to handle the situation by gradually introducing reforms in their colony. The colonial master tried to appease the demand of the people by giving into the demand for participation in bids and prizes. Whatever they would bestow on their subject would only provoke the local elite to ask for more concessions, especially in the political arena. The nationalist leader got unstinted support from the masses. This led to the protest on large scale, which were put down at times. Associations were formed and leaders promised a new life to the people of the colonies with the dawn of independence. In African countries, for example, the Emperor of Ethiopia, Manic II defeated General Austri Balateri, Italian army, in March 1896. Samini Tor in West Africa created a large Mantica empire between 1860 and 1890 and resisted the French till he was captured by the French and died in exile in 1900. 
there are three features of political modernization according to the development syndrome they are differentiation equality and capacity differentiation refers to the process of progressive separation and specialization of role institutional spheres and associations within the political system equality is regarded the ethos of modernity it implies the notion of universal adult citizenship legal equality of all citizen and the psyche equality of opportunity for all to gain excellence according to their respective talents and efforts the subjects of traditional society become citizens of modern society modern political system encourage people's participation in the process of governance this result in the greater respect of law capacity in this sense denotes the increased capacity of political system for the management of public affairs control of disputes and coping up with the new demands of the people in the developing countries the political system has to increase its capacity to fulfill the expectations of the people the developing countries still have a pockets of poverty and the people dying because of mal malnutrition disease and ignorance modernization is a process that spans century this process is an ongoing one because of social change continues as new development take place the process continues modernization after all is a comprehensive concept encompasses all around change in all aspect of living pattern of a society with the entry of multinational corporation these trades along risk taking and entrepreneurship are being welcomed though the traditional system and its compartmentalization exist it is gradually being broken down despite stiff opposition from many quarters the khap panchayats in haryana are just one example of stiff resistance to some of the progressive law made by the indian political system it is here that state has to set in by playing a mature role it has to mobilize resources in a manner that there is a equitable distribution unfortunately the state contribution is lacking product assessment of the plan has to be done so as to fill the lacuna the developing countries are forced to borrow money from outer agencies to carry out development work for this the state has to develop a very capable administrative cadre laws and order has to be maintained and for this the defense forces have to be modernized in the developing countries it is a civil society which is playing a very active role with many people feeling that the government has failed to deliver people are taking up and trying to spread awareness government in the developing countries needs the inputs of the civil society because the demand exceeds the supply of resources though the civil society is still in the initial stages yet seeing the dividends people are encouraged political instability is the other determinant in the path of modernization this leads to the lawlessness and power slipping into the wrong hand we can see modernization being successful when a majority of these countries talk about sustainable development would, which would help them to develop but without bringing about overwhelming changes that would wreck the society fabric the next stage is the stage of complete independence with independence new problem arose the application of contemporary concept of civil society for understanding and analyzing the politics and society of the post colonial society causes unique problem such problem arise basically because these societies have their own historical logic and at the same time they are irreversibly affected by the western modernity so in the end i can conclude that modernization plays a very active role it removes illiteracy as well as it provides educative values to the various people and obviously the various western education centers will be opened in various countries so that the people will be provided or the students will be provided a better education according to the western needs but there are some critics who are totally against modernization they think that if the students will adopt modernization then obviously it leads to the westernization and they will lose their traditional values but in in today's world it is a global village so each and every country is interconnected with each other so if the change if the modernization it occurs in each one society then obviously it it, it will affect the other society also thank you